Hello and welcome to Neighborhood Nature. My name is Lisa and I'm a librarian at St. Albert Public Library and my co-host is Hannah who is a U of A student in animal biology. Today's episode of Neighborhood Nature is the final episode of Neighborhood Nature and we're going to come full circle. In our first episode several months ago we talked about the birds coming back in the spring and now we're going to talk about the birds going south in the winter. And we'll also take a look at what some of the insects are doing for the winter. Not all birds fly south for the winter. These house sparrows stay in Edmonton year-round, and right now they're gobbling down flying ants, which in our household are affectionately known as flants. There's so many of them that they hardly have to move. They just have to go right up to the wall and pick them off. The reason there are so many all at once is because of safety in numbers. If the ants release lots and lots of flying ants at the same time, even though the birds will eat a lot of them, there will still be some that will fly off and survive. The reason you might see a lot of flying ants right now, it's to do definitely with this time of year. Um, both the male and the female ants are released right now, and then they mate, and then the females overwinter here, and then in the spring they'll start a new colony. Besides the house sparrows, there's lots of other birds that will be staying with us all winter, like the house finches. And although lots of birds change into very drab brown colors in the winter, house finches stay red all year long or at least the males do. The females are always brown. House finches really like bird feeders. So if you want to set up a feeder in the winter, you will have a very good chance of getting a house finch to your feeder, especially you'll be able to recognize it by the red in it. It'll either be a house finch or likely a red pole. Another bird that might show up at your feeder in the winter are pine siskins, and they travel in very large noisy flocks. They make little zipping and chattering noises. So it often sounds like there's more birds than there actually is. A group of birds that you might have heard recently that are also quite loud are geese. And you may have seen them when you're out for walks. And I'm guessing you probably have seen them starting to fly south. Unfortunately, we saw them start to fly south about two weeks ago. Um, they're not all gone yet. There's still some here, but it's definitely a sign that winter's coming. Sorry about that. Geese often fly in V formations but so do many other birds, like some gulls, swans, and also cranes. So these birds here may look like a V formation of geese, but they're actually cranes. You can tell because they have very, very long legs, stretching out almost as long as their neck is. If the cranes are flying low enough, you might be lucky enough to be able to hear them. They have a very kind of long, rattly call. To me, it sounds a little bit like when you're cleaning your mirror and you're rubbing it quite vigorously and you make that kind of weird, kind of rattly, squeaky noise. That's what they sound like to me. You can still see some young birds around at this time of year. And this is a young magpie looking rather disheveled. They're very curious birds when they're young. And here you can see that they're exploring some mulch under a tree. And they're not really looking for anything in particular, it doesn't look like. They're just picking up bits of wood and tossing them about very playfully. You can tell this bird is young because it has lots of skin at the corners of its mouth. It looks kind of like a little bump at the edges. We're not close enough to tell that the bird on the right is a juvenile, but it is, and you can tell by the begging posture. These juveniles look like they're old enough to feed themselves, but the parents still seem to be feeding them. And, oh, looks like they found a worm, and now they're fighting over it. The crows will be leaving us in a couple of months to head down south. You can still see large blackbirds around in the winter. So what are those? Those will be ravens. And ravens are kind of odd because they actually come here in the winter. Just like the crows and the ravens, the waxwings trade places. The cedar waxwings are here in the summer and the bohemian waxwings come here in the winter. You can recognize the cedar waxwing by its light underside whereas the bohemian waxwing has a darker underside, kind of a chocolate rust color. Both waxwings travel in very large flocks and will often swirl around before landing on a tree. This is a flock of bohemian waxwings. Both kinds of waxwings also make trailing calls as they fly about. Some birds like waxwings keep the same color year round, whereas other birds change color when they're getting ready to head south, like these warblers. When we saw the yellow rumped warbler in the summer, it looked like this. But now that it's fall, we're going to start seeing it look like this in the next few weeks. 
other animals changed color as well, like this white-tailed jackrabbit. And in this case, it's actually changing color for camouflage. Lots of birds migrate and the mammals stay year-round for the most part, but you might be wondering where, where do the insects go in the winter? Well, some, like ants and bees, will overwinter as adults and in the spring they emerge and start a new colony. Others, like grasshoppers, lay eggs underground and these stay over, over the winter and hatch again in the spring. Dragonflies are a little bit unusual. Their larvae live underwater and so they stay active all winter. In the spring, they emerge from the water and hatch into fully formed dragonflies. Thank you for watching Neighborhood Nature and for tuning in these last several months. And I want to say a special thank you to Hannah for volunteering her time and sharing her knowledge and videos and photos. Thank you so much, Hannah. You're very welcome. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you've missed any of our episodes or you just want to rewatch some of your favorites, you can find them all on our website, www.sapl.ca, and on our library YouTube channel. And don't forget to keep exploring the nature in your neighborhood. Oh,